so good evening everyone uh, the salutation might differ based on the time zone where you're from uh, so tarun and i are today going to talk about uh, uh, the options of building workflows on kubernetes uh, now this talk is uh, somewhat specific to the azure kubernetes service but uh, again you can uh, since it's all kubernetes you can uh, basically use the solution we are going to talk about today, that is Argo, uh, to run workflows on whatever Kubernetes flavor you prefer. Uh, so on the slide, you can see our uh, Twitter links to send us tweets. We like reading them. So we, I mean, Amanda has already introduced us to you guys. Apart from that, uh, we have authored a couple of books. We are big fans of Kubernetes and STO service mesh. Uh, so we produce two free titles mm -hmm. that you can, uh, if you want to get a better understanding of Kubernetes and STO, uh, we produce two short titles, which you can find at uh, the Syncfusion website, mm -hmm. syncfusion.com ebook, search for Kubernetes and STO, and you would find our books there. Uh, so with that, I will uh, uh, hand it over to Tarun. You'll see my face later during the presentation. Thanks, Rahul. So uh, we'll start about a, about with the brief introduction of uh, Azure Kubernetes service. So basically, it's a managed service from Azure, and uh, it's pretty similar to the other managed services we have in other providers like uh, uh, EKS service from uh, AWS or GCP or uh, GKP from uh, uh, Google Cloud. Uh, one of the things which is different in Azure Community Services, uh, you have a managed component also free of cost provided to you as compared to EKS where you have to pay a certain uh, charge for that. Uh, you can manage everything. Uh, so you only have to manage your application and you don't have to pay for any other extra services which are uh, which you are availing as part of uh, AKS uh, managed service. Uh, it supports both Windows and Linux container, uh, which is a plus point for applications which are uh, slightly dependent on uh, Windows uh, OS and they need Windows for their successful run. So you can use both containers in Azure Community Service. Uh, apart from that, it is pretty uh, straightforward uh, Kubernetes implementation. It supports all the native uh, Kubernetes command. You can easily migrate any of your existing services as well, uh, which are already running in your on-premise Kubernetes or any other uh, provider. You can migrate them to Azure Kubernetes service as it supports all the uh, uh, Kubernetes functionality. Uh, so one of the common requirement we have seen in uh, the enterprise applications uh, is some kind of workflow implementation, be it be uh, a simple payment flow or an order flow, or uh, if it's a, a business application, it could be uh, approval flow. So any kind of uh, workflows are usually present in uh, enterprise application and you have multiple options to implement those workflows uh, but it also depends on what kind of uh, existing infrastructure you are running for example if you are building an application from scratch then uh, and you don't have any uh, kubernetes implementation ex already existing and you want to uh, use the managed services there are options of azure logic apps uh, which lets you configure uh, workflows using designer in Azure portal. You don't have to write any code. You have to just uh, use a plug and play uh, model with uh, Azure Logic Apps and uh, it will create a workflow for you. Then you have Azure Durable Functions, which is quite similar to AWS Lambda. So that also allows you to implement uh, workflow implementation. Uh, if you want to go with that, uh, so these are some of the managed options. Uh, but if you already have a existing Kubernetes infrastructure running and you want to uh, leverage that to implement workflow as well, 
uh, then there are some options available for, available for that as well. Uh, for example, you can use uh, Apache Airflow. Apache Airflow is a Python-based implementation for uh, directed acyclic graph. Uh, basically, it allows you to implement a tree-like workflow uh, using Python uh, framework. And uh, you can configure your workflow by writing specific code uh, in Python and then it will work. Then there is another option which is uh, from CNCF that is Argo workflows. So Argo workflows are uh, Kubernetes native uh, object for creating workflows. Uh, you can use Argo workflow to define your workflows just using uh, YAML configuration and the application or the uh, business logic for workflows can be completely independent from the deployment uh, set up. You don't have to uh, have any dependency on that. So we'll uh, discuss more about our workflows in detail uh, during the presentation. Now to select a workflow, uh, you need to consider certain uh, options and that those options depend on a uh, few of these uh, factors. One of them could be uh, there should be uh, a minimum learning curve when you are trying to uh, integrate the a workflow functionality in your application architecture. Uh, you tend to have a, a, a option which doesn't involve a lengthy learning process where you have to learn Python or you have to learn any other technologies just to implement workflows. Uh, then if you are using Kubernetes, uh, then you need to have a tight integration with your existing infrastructure setup. For example, if you have implemented uh, ELK stack uh, for your tracing and your metrics, your logs, then you want that also to be integrated with your workflow implementation. Uh, similarly, from operation perspective, uh, you will want that your workflow uh, is kind of independent from your application business logic uh, uh, so that you can independently focus on uh, business implementation and workflow can be taken care of by the operations team if you have that. Uh, also, you, uh, in some scenarios, if you want to re reuse your workflow step, for example, if you have a uh, scenario where you want to send uh, emails or notification to users at certain steps, you want to you will want to reuse that uh, functionality across. Uh, different workflows so that you don't have to rewrite that again. And the solution should be scalable uh, with your existing setup, depending upon the demand. So I'll uh, transfer the control to Rahul now. Thanks, Harul. So one of the feature, I'm sorry, am I audible? Yeah, uh, you need to sh uh, share the PPT as well, Rahul. Sure. Yep, uh, so let me know if uh, things look good. Yeah. Sorry, while Tarun was talking, I forgot about uh, one of the uh, things about the presentation. So we have split the presentation into three logical units. Uh, so we'll stop after each logical unit for questions. Uh, and if there aren't any, we'll proceed on to the next section. So uh, now I will introduce Argo to you guys. So basically Argo is a CNCF project, uh, an open source project that was originally built by Intuit. Uh, and later donated to CNCF. Now, Argo in itself is not a single project. Uh, it essentially is a combination of four independent projects. So those four independent projects are workflows, continuous delivery rollouts, and events. I will give you a brief introduction about uh, all these projects uh, just a little bit uh, later. Uh, but for now, uh, the Argo community has some uh, really big players behind it. So there are uh, companies like Adobe, Google, GitHub, et cetera, which are uh, using Argo for uh, building and maintaining their workflows. 
So uh, it's a decent choice if you choose Argo for uh, running, running and building your workflows on Kubernetes. And we'll also see how simple it is to do that. Uh, so let's look at uh, all of these projects in a little bit more detail uh, so that you have an idea of what all these projects do. Uh, again, all these projects are independent of each other, so you can choose one or many based on your needs. So the first project I want to talk to you about is Argo CD. CD stands for Continuous Deployment. Uh, so what it does, this project essentially does, is it is a CD uh, tool for GitOps. So, uh, so for those of you who don't know what GitOps is, uh, it's a fancy new term that is uh, floating in the Kubernetes and cloud native space nowadays. Uh, so uh, very simply, let's take an example. So let's say Stephen is, uh, uh, writes and pushes his code in a Git repository, uh, and he wants to deploy his services to Kubernetes. Then Argo CD is a service that would sit in Kubernetes of watching a particular Git repository, in this case, Stephen's Git repository. And whenever he marks his intention through changes in YAML specifications that he wants his piece of code to be deployed as a service, and uh, uh, and that service should have, let's say, two instances running, this CD tool will then uh, uh, observe the changes and make changes in the cluster to represent what Stephen wants. So that's what GitOps is. Now you can use this definition when a recruiter next calls you. Uh, just throw in some uh, uh, some mumbo jumbo around it, some uh, technical concepts, Whoa. and you have well covered. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just a bit confused. What's the first of all? What's this Kubernetes thing, and what's this Git thing you're talking about? <laughs> all right, <laughs> Stephen, you need to. Start from low zero. <laughs> so I was just passing on the question on behalf of Chris Fordham, who's in the audience there. He's a bit embarrassed to ask. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. carry on. <laughs> yeah, there's an excellent site called Google. You can search many things on it. <laughs> I am. I'm, I'm consulting it right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the next project that uh, I would like to talk about is Argo rollouts. So. Basically, if you look at uh, Kubernetes, it has uh, only two modes of deployments. If you uh, if you have been working with Kubernetes for a while, uh, so basically, it can either when you uh, give a new version of a service to Kubernetes, uh, it can deploy it in two manners. One is rolling update, another one is recreate. So, what does rolling update mean? So, let's say if you have two instances of a service running and you Give a new version of the service to Kubernetes to deploy. It will take down an instance, uh, replace it with new container, uh, with a new container, move on to the next one, replace it with a new container. So that way you don't have any downtime while rollouts. Uh, the other strategy is recreate. So with recreate, both the instances of the service would be taken down and replaced with new instances. That uh, will have incur some downtime. Uh, during the time this transition is happening. But in many enterprise scenarios, these two strategies are not enough. So Argo rollouts, uh, when you install this to your Kubernetes cluster, it will add native, native capabilities of two more deployment strategies, which is blue-green and canary. So blue-green deployments mean that, uh, let's say your version one of a service is running and uh, you want to uh, trial version two, uh, so you want to uh, deploy version two of the service as well in parallel, uh, you get the capability to do that. And at a later point of time, when you're satisfied with uh, uh, version two's performance and whatever metrics or criteria you have for the success of a service, you can kill version one of the service. And that way, all the clients would be onboarded to version two. Uh, Canary is... Uh, uh, you can the, the most relatable uh, way. Uh, I mean, the most common uh, thing which you have uh, observed for Canary deployments is how Microsoft releases its updates. So basically, Microsoft has these uh, rings that you can join. So inside a ring, and then sl uh, slow move, slow ring, fast ring, those kind of rings. So basically, you get Microsoft updates faster if you are in the fast ring, and the general public gets it at a later point of time. 
So you can treat your service rollouts in the same way. So basically you roll out only to a subset of users. When those users uh, report that they are happy with the service, then you propagate it further out. And that's in a nutshell what candidate deployments are. And uh, these two capabilities you can add to Kubernetes natively by uh, using the Argo rollouts project. Uh, that brings me to the third uh, project, Argo events. So basically, uh, there are uh, cases where you want to trigger workflows or CI, CD, or uh, any processes for that matter based on uh, based as a reaction to changes in a particular resource. Argo events that that capability natively to Kubernetes. So basically, if you want to uh, observe, let's say, an S3 bucket, DCP uh, pops up, or uh, an Azure resource, uh, such that when an activity happens in one of these resources, then it kicks off a workflow function or an event. Then you can declare the events the and uh, declare the event, the source, and the target of the event uh, using a Kubernetes manifest. And that what Argo will do is it will uh, uh, wash those sources for the events and uh, kick off any of the uh, kick off the targets that you specify. The targets could be a workflow function or CI/CD uh, pipeline. Uh, so before we move on to uh, the next phase, which is Argo workflows, uh, just want to get a pulse on whether there are any questions here. I think we do have a couple of questions. Uh, so from the cast, the four components get installed with Argo, or do we need to deploy or configure these separately? So you can deploy one or more component in the cluster. As I said, that all of these are independent projects. Uh, in the in a demo later, we'll show you that uh, we have only deployed the workflow component because that's what this presentation is about. But you can uh, install and configure them separately. Okay, awesome. We got a couple more questions coming through. Uh, so this is from Tam. Can, can you explain the main benefits of using the Git pool model compared to Git push model in GitOps? Uh, so again, GitOps has these two models. So uh, I'm not really sure about uh, this question. Tarun, do you want to take that question? We've got no strong opinions on it. <laughs> That's uh, fair yeah. enough. Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay, same so here. So it, it depends on your uh, scenario as well as what you view is the best suitable for the case. Yeah, because both of them are valid uh, options in GitOps. So if anybody else has got any other opinions, maybe you can post them into um, into the chat window and we can review them as we go along. Um, <clears throat> so we have a question from uh, Mohit, um, who said, which, which tool uh, is best for CI, CD, and Kubernetes? Tecton, Go CD, or Argo? Now, again, this is a very subjective question. Each tool has you its own. You should know trend. everything about all these products. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so each of these tools have their uh, own uh, strengths. Not saying that uh, Argo CD is the best, but Argo CD, uh, when you combine it with other uh, Argo projects, becomes more powerful. Uh, so, for example, if you want a native binding between, let's say, Argo CD and uh, such that whenever a new service is deployed, then it should kick off a service or something of that sort, or you want to basically uh, right after your CD, you want to propagate a canary deployment. Then that's where these projects can work uh, much closer together because they belong to the same family. Uh, but uh, I mean, we personally uh, in Zip use the GitLab uh, for uh, 
uh, CI CD and now go for workflows and it works pretty well. Okay. Um, if uh, if anybody else would, would really like to dig in around this stuff, I think we've got we've got a couple of um, Argo enthusiasts that are also in the audience. Um, so I'm sure there might be some interesting conversation that we'll be having sort of towards the end of the talk as well. But um, we, we might just leave, leave the questions just now and just let you get back on uh, with your talk. We'll come back just when you're ready. Sure, thanks. Okay, so the next component uh, of Argo suit is Argo workflows, which is our uh, topic of the day. So Argo workflows are container native workflow engine. Uh, they are specifically designed for Kubernetes. And when you deploy Argo uh, in your cluster, it creates uh, certain CRDs, which like uh, workflow steps DAG which get installed in your cluster and you can uh, use them in YAML like you use other Kubernetes object. Uh, this is the Argo workflows are completely cloud agnostic. You can run it on any Kubernetes cluster. Uh, it is also used for uh, uh, archiving workflow as well so that you can create a workflow and it will get up archive and you can run it later as well uh, in case of uh, argo uh, you get a very high scale supercomputer uh, in the kubernetes cluster and you can use existing kubernetes features like uh, affinity tolerance and volumes to store your Kubernetes state as well Next, Rahul. So this is the workflow spec. We have, uh, as you can see, uh, this is the YAML def definition for Argo workflow. The first one, uh, you have to define the workflow as kind workflow, which is a CRD which gets installed when you install Argo. Then you have to define an entry point. Entry point is nothing but a name of a template, which you define later in your workflow. So you can define uh, many templates uh, inside the YAML, and you can choose any of those template as one of the uh, workflow entry point. So your workflow will start from that template. Then uh, you can also define dependencies within the workflow spec. Uh, we have a demo as well in the talk where we will show you how we have defined dependencies between different steps using the same uh, workflow schema. As you can see uh, below, uh, there is a DAG whose name is DAG workflow and it has a task, different tasks, a task A and task B. So task A is using the template echo and echo template is defined above the DAG workflow and what it does is it just take a message as input parameter and it is running uh, alpine image and just echoing that message and then there is a next task b which is uh, uh, doing the same thing but it has a dependency on uh, task a so it will run only after task a has uh, executed successfully We also have uh, Argo CLI, which is just a wrapper over uh, kubectl commands. Basically, it lets you uh, write uh, Argo commands easily using uh, some shortcuts. For example, if you want to uh, submit a workflow, you just use Argo submit and the workflow file name, and it will submit your workflow in the cluster and start executing. If you want to see the list of workflow, you just use Argo list and it will uh, show you the list of workflow which are available in the cluster. Instead of Argo list, you can also uh, use kubectl uh, get workflows and it will show you the list of uh, workflows which are available in, in the namespace with which you are searching.
Next, Rahul. All right. Uh, yeah. So Tarun basically talked about uh, the workflow and the structure of a workflow. You saw that how in the spec it looks very different from the spec that you defined for services and deployments in Kubernetes. In that uh, workflow uh, by installing Argo workflows, our workflows become the first class citizens of Kubernetes. Uh, you can define uh, workflows using the spec. Uh, one of the common things that uh, you would be doing within a workflow is passing parameters between steps. So let's say your workflow has step A and step B. B needs input from step A. So the first code listing shows you how you can pass arguments between uh, different steps. So it takes an uh, the workflow definition, the step definition takes an args as a parameter which uh, in which you can specify uh, a parameter from a previous step in this format <clears throat> now also some other times uh, what you might want is that uh, between workflow steps you pass in binary data and not simple text values in that case you can use artifacts so for example if uh, again let's take the example of uh, workflow that consists of step A and B, where B is dependent on A, then A can produce a text file. Uh, as you can see in the example here, uh, with this uh, step is producing a text file called hello world text. And uh, step B can then consume this text file as an artifact. And these artifacts would basically be stored on disk, or uh, they can also be uh, configured to be stored on uh, on a, another storage provider and uh, they can be passed between uh, different steps. So some of the more advanced features of Argo are uh, these. So one of the core features that uh, you might use from time to time is memoise resubmit. So it's a fancy term, but uh, it's not that hard. Memoise resubmit does means resuming a workflow from the place where it failed. So if a workflow has steps A, B, and C, it uh, for some reason failed at step B, then you don't need to run step A again in order to resume the workflow. You can resume from B itself, and uh, it would basically restart the process from step B wherever it failed. Uh, you also have the ability to suspend and resume a workflow. So if, uh, if you have a long running workflow, or let's say your workflow requires manual intervention, which uh, is the case with uh, many of the enterprise workflows where manual approvals are required. You can suspend a uh, workflow at that point, uh, either programmatically or through CLI or through the REST API of Argo. And then after the work, as in whenever you want to resume the workflow, you can again use the CLI or UI or REST API to resume the workflow from that point. Uh, so, not just these commands, but you can within the workflow also suspend the execution and uh, resume the execution as well. So we'll see an example of uh, suspension and resumption of workflow in the uh, demo that we'll present shortly. So apart from that, uh, there are some more advanced features that are uh, provided by Argo. So your workflows can the steps the task in your workflow can execute in sidecars and daemon containers so but sidecars are if you are aware of the sidecar pattern then basically these are just containers that are running side by side with your existing containers so in context of argo what this would be is if you want to kick off a process that works alongside your uh, workflow then you can run that as a sidecar. Daemon container, on the other hand, are uh, Kubernetes objects that can run on uh, different ports. And uh, you can have as many uh, daemon containers as there are ports on your uh, uh, pods in your uh, Kubernetes cluster. So in context of Argo, what it means is that you can assign work to a background task. So let's say if there is a lot of number crunching to be done. 
in the background as part of your workflow. You can uh, delegate that work off to a daemon container and uh, the main workflow can keep processing in the foreground while this uh, number crunching activity is happening in the background. So apart from that, Arco uh, supplies all the, has implementation of all the DAG features. So DAG is a, uh, is an acronym for directed acyclic graphs. Uh, you don't have to really dig into computer science books to understand what it is. Just think of it as a simple workflow with steps. So boxes and arrows, uh, arrows connecting two boxes. That's what DAG is. Um, so inside DAGs, you can have conditions, just like you have conditions in flowcharts. Uh, you can also have a sub DAG within a DAG, which is uh, called a subroutine. You can loop between tasks and uh, recursions. All these operations are common DAG operations, and uh, they're all well supported in Argo. <clears throat> uh, if you want to get even more fancy, then uh, you can generate DAG from code as well. So, which means that let's say if your workflow has a bunch of steps, and as and when uh, after a step gets executed, you want to spawn another instance of a workflow or uh, spawn a workflow dynamic uh, dynamically, but you can do that by uh, writing these uh, DAGs as code. Uh, they also have this uh, feature of uh, post run hooks. So let's say uh, you have to send out an email when a workflow is done processing. So you can use these post run hooks to uh, kick off another process, a container, or something else, uh, which can handle these uh, post run steps for you. <clears throat> you can also create uh, Kubernetes resources. So for example, if uh, let's say after a workflow executes, you want to spin up 10 instances of a service, then uh, you can bind this logic in the workflow itself. And uh, because it is running inside Kubernetes, it has access to the Kubernetes resources that can spin up new resources for you. So uh, these are the deployment model uh, for Arco. You can deploy it in uh, two format. Uh, one is a hosted format where you deploy the two component of Argo, which is Argo con workflow controller and Argo server uh, into the Kubernetes cluster. And another one is a local uh, model where the workflow controller is deployed in the cluster while the server remains outside the cluster. Uh, the two components which are there in Argo, Argo uh, workflow controller and server, they, they have their own uh, specific functionality. For example, Argo server is responsible for uh, running the workflow and uh, starting the workflow and then for Argo UI. So Argo UI also is one of the feature of Argo workflow where you can, where you can visualize the entire workflow and uh, also operate on the workflow through the UI uh, interface. To trigger the workflows, uh, you have multiple options. Uh, you can trigger them manually or you can schedule them. You can also have event-based uh, trigger uh, using Argo events. So you can combine Argo events and Argo workflows to have uh, event-based trigger. Uh, manual invocation can be done via Argo CLI or QCTL command or through Argo UI, or you can schedule them uh, uh, via uh, Kubernetes. Or uh, if you are using Argo event as well, then you can uh, integrate Argo events, which will uh, then hook up with uh, external sources like GitHub or Slack or you can use uh, other cloud resources as well, like uh, AWS, SQL, PubSub, or uh, Azure Event Hub. In case uh, any of these options are not uh, suitable for your scenario, Argo also provides a REST API, uh, which you can use to directly invoke the workflow uh, using the REST API, and you can invoke it uh, in a way as you, as you like. So this is a sample of uh, workflow UI. As you can see, this is a DAG uh, where all these uh, uh, boxes are 
different steps in a workflow and you can click on any of these steps to get more information about the uh, execution you can see the logs of the container within the argo ui you can also uh, rerun the workflow uh, from the argo ui you can suspend our workflow resume a workflow uh, you can also debug if there is any error in your workflow execution you can debug that uh, using argo ui uh, argo ui is also uh, can also be integrated with your existing authentication mechanism like open id or OAuth, and you can protect, uh, protect it uh, using those uh, uh, mechanism yeah going on and talking for a while <clears throat> so we'll open the floor to questions I think we've got a few more questions come in there. So let's just have a quick read. So I've got one from uh, from Tim who's saying, how, how does Argo handle the storage and retrieval of credentials or secrets? So you can use uh, the native Kubernetes capabilities. So for most, yeah. uh, most of the yeah. time you would be using Kubernetes secrets or uh, Populating the secrets as event uh, variable, environment variable, sorry, uh, in Kubernetes applications. So Argo is able to read all those values because it is, at the end of the day, it is just another Kubernetes resource. So it has all the native integrations with those kind of things. Yeah, you can define your uh, secret uh, as a volume in your workflow template, and then you can access it in environment variable within your workflow steps. Cool. Hopefully that answers the question. So secrets are dealt with sort of independently from Argo, which is cool. Uh, we've got um, Ahmed asking a question. Is, is there any managed service, like platform as a service for Argo uh, on AWS or Azure? Um, so there isn't. Uh, so I, uh, don't you want to take this question or should I go ahead? Yeah, uh, I don't think there is any managed service yet uh, for Argo, uh, but maybe in future we might see uh, uh, other service provider offering managed options as well for Argo. But right now there is no managed service. Yep. Okay, uh, we've got one a question from Israel. Um, so he's saying that uh, he, he's asking, can, can we trigger an Argo workflow from out from an outside server, uh, like yep. using uh, Linux's curl, for example? Can mm -hmm. Argo events help in this? Yeah. So in one of the slides that we presented, uh, we actually uh, spoke about how events can interact with workflows. So you can use events as a mechanism to kick off a workflow. Events support webhooks and uh, many other resources. But I think in your case, you are interested in using the webhooks uh, event uh, store to kick off. Uh, sorry, webhooks event trigger to kick off a workflow. That's the integration you are looking for. Okay, there's there's a few there's a few more questions coming in here. Yeah. Um, so this is from um, Israel again. Uh, he's saying that he has tried Argo and uh, noticed that it seems to follow a slightly different um, indentation pattern from Kubernetes. And the question is, can you use customize with a K, mm -hmm. yeah. customize feature of Kubernetes in an Argo workflow? So we didn't notice any difference in indentation of uh, Argo, uh, maybe that yeah. was the case with some of the older versions, uh, but uh, the recent ones yeah. we tried, we never had any issues. So, so I think what yeah. the guys are saying is, um, Israel, that you need to make sure that you're not tipping ahead to one side. It could affect your vision. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sometimes that happens uh, with projects, uh, some of the Kubernetes projects that uh, older versions are not very uh, similar to the more recent ones. Uh, they keep improving with time, so maybe try the recent ones. I, I will show you an example of a Kubernetes manifest, uh, sorry, Argo manifest. It 
looks very similar to a Kubernetes manifest. Okay, I'll take one, one more question before we hand back over to you guys. It's from uh, Mohit again. Um, any examples for um, re real-time workflow use cases implemented on Argo? That's what the demo is on, <laughs> uh, a real-life uh, use case. Uh, not exactly a real-life one, but uh, quite close to one. Yeah, and also, uh, if you go to Argo website, uh, there are more than uh, 50 companies which are using Argo in production right now. And they are all using it for real-world scenarios. Yeah. If anybody else is using um, Argo in production, if you want to just give a bit of a shout out on the chat box, that, that would be um, interesting. Okay, there are a few, a few more questions, but what we'll do is we'll pass back to you guys just now and just at, at the next break, if you can just flip, flip back over and we'll get to the rest of the questions. Yep, uh, we have only this demo remaining and the closing slides, uh, and then we'll take up the rest of the questions. Cool. cool. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, so, in the demo, I would uh, talk about a typical uh, scenario of how an article uh, uh, of a publishing house, in which which is in the business of publishing articles, and how an article moves from draft state to published state. Uh, so it has to follow a sequence of steps uh, that are documented in. Uh, that are in this picture. I'll talk to you about this picture next. Uh, so let's say if you work at XYZ News, uh, if it names matches a real world entity, it's just a coincidence. And uh, you're the author of an article, then uh, assume there is a workflow of this sort. This is how your article needs to progress. So first of all, the uh, in the first stage, the article would be in draft state. Uh, the workflow would move it to a request review state where it will stay waiting till, let's say, a process that is running spell checks on your article picks it up and uh, marks it as complete. And then uh, uh, after it is marked as complete, a parallel workflow would pick up that article and uh, maybe through manual intervention or through an automated uh, in an automated manner, the spell checker marks it as approved. <clears throat> it would be staying in waiting state until the, the spell checker has marked it as approved, after which an editor, a human, would pick this article, review it. Maybe it will go through some changes back and forth. And the editor, after they mark it as approved, your article would move to a ready to publish state. Uh, and once it is published, your article finally moves to a published state. Let's say the business gave you this scenario to this workflow to build, and you have this workflow that you are going to build. Uh, we'll see how you can build this workflow next. Uh, the source code of this presentation and the workflow are available in Bitly at this link, Bitly R1 underscore demo. That's where I'm going to move to now. <clears throat> so uh, we have uh, supply scripts. If you want to set up uh, Argo on AKS, or if you want to run it on local uh, with kind. Uh, since some of the previous meetup sessions that I attended, I saw that some people weren't very uh, comfortable with running Kubernetes on their local system. So that's what we're going to demo today. But there is no difference between uh, running work Argo on local system or on uh, any Kubernetes flavor that you choose. Uh, Guys, so you I'm can- sorry for, I'm sorry for interrupting. Can you just uh, increase the size of your font? Oh, sorry. Bit, please? oh sorry. Maybe it's just my yeah. old eyes. There we go, thanks. Yeah. Uh, so there is a, as I was saying, a script for uh, setting up uh, Argo on your local system with kind. There is a script for setting it up on with AKS, and you can choose any flavor. Uh, 
and this is the work uh, this is the workflow uh, so we'll go through uh, the various important pieces of the workflow so that uh, when you're authoring your workflow yourself are comfortable with it uh, so yeah, one of the attendees asked the question uh, whether the specification of a workflow looks different from other Kubernetes resources. So on the screen, you can see that uh, uh, this specification looks quite similar to uh, other Kubernetes object specifications. So you specify an API version, a kind. Here you would traditionally write deployment services, etc. cetera, pods. Uh, but since after installing uh, Argo, you can specify an object <clears throat> called workflow here. Uh, the metadata generate name would essentially, uh, when you run multiple instances of the workflow, uh, each of them would have a unique name. And if you want to supply a prefix to each workflow run, uh, you can specify it here. So in our case, each uh, run of the workflow would be prefix with DAG hyphen news hyphen whatever is the name generated by Argo. Uh, in the spec, we specify the entry point, which is nothing but uh, which task it should run first. So when it sees the name news, Argo will try to look for the name news in the spec. When it reaches here, it will see that uh, this uh, workflow is of tag type. There are other kinds of workflows as well, uh, apart from DAG. Uh, so uh, there are scheduled workflows as well that you can use. But uh, our workflow is of type DAG, which is nothing but a flowchart. And it will start uh, running this uh, DAG. So the first task in this DAG is uh, rough. In the template, you can specify the container to run and the arguments that you want to pass to the container. Uh, I want to draw your attention to uh, a suspend and resume step. Uh, as I spoke about that, uh, you can make the workflow suspend its uh, uh, suspend itself and then manually resume it later. So here you can see that. Uh, where did I put it? Uh, thing with the YAML says that it is always hard to read. Uh, yep. <laughs> so there's the wait for editor step when uh, the, your workflow uh, asks for, uh, uh, tries to trigger this wait for editor step, it will suspend the execution because we have uh, specified it that way. Uh, so we are running Argo on kind right now. And uh, what I'm going to do is uh, uh, kick off this workflow. So for that, what I'm going to do is uh, uh, how this work. So this workflow expects a new document to be present in, a, in an Azure Blob container. So we'll go to this ready container. As you can see that this container has nothing. Ultimately, it will move uh, all the approved articles to the approved container. <clears throat> Again, this one has nothing in it. So in the ready container, we'll try to upload a document. Uh, let's create a new text document. Uh, let's name it awesome article. And uh, add some text to it. All right. That's what generally happens. I type quite fast, but I'm walking and typing it goes down. Uh, so I'm going to upload this document here. So this document is now in uh, this ready container. So as we said that uh, there are multiple ways how you can kick off a workflow do that manually through REST API, but one of the most common ways in which you would be working with uh, Argo is through Argo CLI. So 
Uh, sorry. I, I Argo works through Argo, Argo create. Argo submit. Oh, sorry. Always forget this. And uh, this is the DAG that I was talking about. Press enter. And if you go to the UI, you'll see that uh, it kicked off that workflow. Uh, this UI as in looks quite pretty to business because uh, in the same format in which you capture specifications from business, you can build a workflow uh, that uh, in a representation of the same format. <clears throat> so here you can see that uh, the article has uh, was first in draft state and then reached the request review state. It was uh, waiting for spell checker. Spell checker picked it up and uh, uh, ran spell checks on it. And then uh, someone from the spell check team, uh, generally in uh, uh, content formatting team approved the workflow. Now it is waiting for a journalist. Uh, say for instance, if Stephen is an editor, he went to the Azure container, looked at your article, and he thinks that it looks good and approved it. So you can either resume this workflow from the UI or uh, from the CLI. In our case, we'll just resume it from the UI. So once you click on resume, what this is going to do is it is, in this case, just going to pick that file from the ready container, move it to the approved container. And now it, this workflow has completed execution. <clears throat> so if we go to this container, refresh it again, this file is no longer there. Sorry. The, one, what is this? Uh, the file has reached here. So if we download it, open this file, it is the same file that we submitted earlier. So that concludes our uh, demo. Let me go back to the slides. So the final thing that uh, I would like to talk about is how you can uh, CD your workflows. So uh, if your business is already using Kubernetes, then you might already have some existing deployment strategies, for example, using Helm or using Kubeket curl apply or through a, um, through a tool like Cargo CD, you can, uh, uh, you can use the same uh, investments that you made in uh, those deployment tools to deploy Argo workflows as well, because it's just a manifest, uh, gets deployed in the exact same way as other resources on Kubernetes, uh, which also means that uh, you can package and upgrade your workflows with help. And because it's treated uh, as a resource in the same way as other re Kubernetes resources are treated. So that means that you can deploy and roll back changes as well. So if you're not happy with a version of workflow and you want to deploy another version, uh, those kind of uh, objectives can be met as well. Uh, so in the end, uh, I would again like to point you to the source code uh, available at quickly Argo demo. Uh, that concludes our discussion. Uh, open to questions now. Awesome, thank you guys. Um, I might just uh, flick the camera over here just, just for one second. Amanda, maybe Stephen, you can I'm just pass that across. For the questions. Yep. Uh, I can't seem to click it. Boy. Oh, is my, my scary face showing there? Anyway, uh, let's move on to the, the questions. So we've got quite, quite a few here. Um, 
Gabriel is asking, uh, is there any web dashboard part of Argo to follow the current or past deployments, like check log and errors and stuff like that? Uh, yes, there is. So on the UI that I presented, uh, if your workflow fails, then uh, you would see a button on the UI uh, to see the logs. And even if it doesn't fail, you can uh, look at the logs basically. So you can click on that button and it will show you some logs on the UI itself. Okay, cool. Uh, Tim is asking if you've got any uh, any advice or if you can talk around um, RBAC with regards to um, Argo? So R RBAC in Argo is uh, dependent upon what you want to do uh, with your workflow steps. Like if you want your workflow to create a resource, then you will need a create permission for that resource uh, for your uh, workflow uh, service account. So it's totally up to you and your requirement. And uh, since it is natively integrated with Kubernetes, so you don't have to do anything extra for Argo uh, RBAC. It is similar to any other uh, service account you define for your Kubernetes resources. So another thing I would like to point out to you is uh, if your Argo workflows are running in a particular uh, namespace and uh, you want uh, Argo workflows to control resources in some other, other namespace. Uh, it is very same as how you do uh, do the same thing for uh, other Kubernetes resources. You basically create a delegated permission. <clears throat> and it's the same way uh, that you delegate permission to Argo to execute something in a different namespace. Uh, so I think it is, uh, what is this called? So you specify a cluster role basically uh, on a namespace. Uh, it is the same thing that you would do for Argo as well. If you go to the uh, AKS setup uh, batch file that we have in the repo, you would find how we have uh, uh, specified a role binding through which Argo is able to execute uh, workflows in a different namespace. Excellent. Maybe if you can, if you guys could post the URL into the chat section, if not already, yep, that would sure. probably be pretty useful for your code. Yep. Uh, okay. So a question from Tam uh, saying we we works uh, is kind of vocal in, in the GitOps space. Recently, there was a collaboration for GitOps engine. What do you think about this effort? If you know about it. Uh, oh, I'm uh, not aware of that change that happened. Uh, do you have something to say about that? Okay. Yeah, I have also not uh, gone through that uh, much. Okay. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, we've got a question from uh, Vincent in uh, Melbourne. If not asked already, where does Argo store the state? Does it need a relational database like Airflow or file system in a PV or something? So, yep. So natively, it will try to, for best performance of workflows, it will try to store the state on a disk that you attach or uh, on the local memory uh, on the space available within the, uh, the pods. But if you want, you can extend that storage to uh, a relational database uh, and it can store some data over there as well. But it is not generally recommended or preferred because it adds latency to the execution. Okay. A uh, question from Gabriel. If you guys have got any experience with circ Okay, first question. Do you guys have any experience with Circle CI? Oh, they're way too many CI questions. <laughs> not really. He was asking if you got any experience with Circle CI, would you say that Argo is a one to one replacement for Circle CI? And if not, uh, what, was, what would be the main difference? So, 
again, uh, CI CD systems. Uh, I would reiterate the same point here. <clears throat> so if you're using Argo CD in combination with other projects, then uh, it gives you some additional features with other other CI CD systems uh, don't, because uh, uh, all these components basically understand, can talk to each other, even though you can use them separately and independently. Uh, Argo, Circle CI, GitLab, and there are so many others. Uh, you can use them, but uh, they won't uh, be able to do all the things that Argo can. But then again, uh, Argo CD might not have all the features that all these other CI CD systems have. Uh, but the main advantage of Argo is that it is uh, natively integrated with Kubernetes. So if you have uh, already Kubernetes set up and you want to have uh, your uh, CD capability or workflow capability also in Kubernetes, then you can go with the Argo CD or Argo workflows. Yeah, that's one of the things that your CI CD system can live within Kubernetes. Uh, sorry, not CI, but CD system can live within Kubernetes. So you have essentially a repo to take care of. And uh, once you commit your code from that point on, Argo takes over. Okay. Which won't be the case with others. So we've got. We've got a few more, a few more questions here. Uh, one from um, Ash. He's saying, if the editor marked draft, would it get published if spell check is not approved? Uh, so in our demo, we haven't catered to that scenario. But of course, you can build workflows which have that kind of logic. Uh, so you're talking about if else condition within uh, workflows uh, and Argo supports all DAG operations. You can have conditional executions as well. So only if uh, one of the inputs, outputs of a previous step is set true, then you execute uh, a branch of workflow. Otherwise, you default to something else. Uh, those kind of operations are supported. Okay. Yeah, and you just you just have to define uh, a container for each step, and uh, inside the container you can do anything uh, you want to do as per your business requirement. It's similar to running a pod, and you can have any logic inside the container as per your requirement. Hopefully that helped. If I could maybe just ask uh, Vikas, Ash, and Mohit. If you want to request the microphone, uh, I've never done this as an attendee. It's just that, that you've asked quite quite a few questions, and it might be better if you just ask them direct. <laughs> uh, let me see if there's anybody else as well. Uh, Israel has asked. I don't know whether you guys can actually see, see the questions. If you click on the questions, chaps. There's a question being asked by um, Israel that you may, may need to read. It's it's quite a long yeah. question. Up at the top. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And if Vikas, um, Ash, and Mohit want to request the microphone, see if you guys can find it. It might be easier for you just to ask the questions direct. You talk about the third question from top. Uh, the one from Israel about three shell the scripts. Third one, yes, the third one from the top. Yeah. I have Ash who requested for the, an open mic. Yeah, let's grant that one. And as soon as the guys okay. have, have had a go at um, Israel's question. Uh, I think uh, what Israel uh, uh, is uh, asking in the question is uh, basically a business requirement. You want to run workflow in a certain format uh, uh, that is 
easily possible because you have the option of invoking the workflow uh, through uh, scripts or scheduling the workflow at a specific time. So if say let uh, you want to execute uh, uh, workflow C as dependent on workflow A and B, and you want to schedule workflow A and B at particular time, so you can do that. But C will only run uh, once A and B have completed. So you can have scheduled execution for A and B and then run C uh, once those are executed. Yep. So basically, it's not just steps, but uh, workflow can also be tied together. And that's how you can have a mix of uh, ground based workflows and tag based workflows. Uh, uh, to answer Vikas question, uh, which is, uh, can Argo check the latest Docker image and deploy that? I believe uh, it's uh, similar to like, uh, if you make a uh, change in your repository, basically you update the uh, version for your Docker, Docker image in the repository and you can have Argo events hook up to your uh, repository and then that Argo event will trigger the Argo workflow based on that and then our workflow will take the latest image uh, as an input from your repository. So it can be done through that. Uh, regarding the next one that we have, uh, where, we, does, I think where we, is the history of deployments? I think we may have uh, Vikas and Ash, you may have the microphone. So Ash, if you, if you can hear us, do you just wanna ask your questions? Hi, can you hear me? Yep, so the camera. Yes. Yes. Fantastic. Uh, so basically, after looking at the four projects, I was thinking that the four projects could actually build a CI system because each project builds on a builds on the other. So, for example, the workflow would build your CI component because it's running the containers the events would be hooking back to the workflow that we call it, and the CD could be the ones that could deploy once a repository has been published. Am I right on that? So, of course, you can use all these projects together, uh, and I'm not sure how many companies use that uh, workflow to uh, for their CI CD, but, but uh, it can be implemented using all these uh, projects together. But as we just saw that nothing really stops you from using just one of the projects to for a yeah. certain class of business problems. Now, basically, what I'm trying to also ask is in the workflow, you can run any container and yeah. actually create the DAG because if, uh, if a CI, a CI is actually building something. So if, say, for example, building a Java project, I could mm -hmm. actually build a Java project in that container. And because it's got input and output, it's similar like Jenkins, I could just pass in, in inputs and outputs to it. Mm -hmm. yeah, yes, sure. yes, yes. Uh, that is possible theoretically. Okay. And one more question I had is, you know, regarding the first initial diagram that you showed, you showed an SQL component in the diagram. What's that for? So, uh, yeah, proud go ahead. Uh, sure. Uh, I think I, we answered that in uh, another question as well, that uh, if you want to, uh, let me just navigate back to the diagram. Uh, so if you want, you can persist uh, state data in database as well. Natively, it would try to, uh, uh, for performance reasons, workflow uh, and output or workflow and information would be persisted on disk, but uh, you can externalize this information and uh, attach a SQL database to Argo so that uh, you know if space runs out or uh, if you are persisting a massive amount of data uh, between your workflow steps, it can push all that data out to a SQL DB. Would you think that people using Apache Airflow would migrate to this platform? I haven't seen such a case. We did investigate uh, using Airflow, but uh, 
it's an overkill in most of the cases. It's it does have almost all of the features that Argo Argo has and even more, but uh, the learning curve is quite high and uh, moreover you have to be quite careful about uh, some of the deep internals of airflow otherwise uh, i mean the learning curve is one of the primary reasons why we discounted it but there are organizations that are running workflows on apache airflow and but uh, they're fine with it this argo is easier to learn and manage than airflow is because i'm using argo cd I'm not using any other okay. products. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank Thank you guys. <laughs> That's something you can try in your organization. Okay. We have Mohit as well, who has um, mic access. Hi, Mohit. Hi, Mohit. Mohit, can you hear us? As in, more to the point, can we hear you? We can't, I think, so far. Yeah, can you hear me, guys? Yes, we can. Yeah, yeah uh, thanks, guys. Thanks for the session. So, uh, uh, sorry uh, for being naive. So, I, I just want to understand. So, uh, is like the workflows similar as BPM flows uh, that, that can be hosted on Argo? I have heard of BPM flows. So, uh, BPM flow are actually uh, kind of like a process uh, overall, and workflows are one of the uh, component of BPM. Okay. So if you want to implement uh, workflows as part of the BPM process, you can use Argo for those workflows. OK, so it is not like, like the workflow is just a, just a steps involved in the BPM, right? Yeah. OK, OK. Yeah, now it's for the definition. <laughs> so. Uh, basically, the what you saw in the demo is also sort of a BPM, uh, although it doesn't have uh, all the fancy stuff of the BPM, like if it's branching stuff, but uh, uh, we did model a BPM flow of sort. And uh, one more thing, sir, like uh, how participants in the workflow gets notified, like uh, in the current scenario, uh, how editor will get notified that he has to like review an article so how does, does that thing happen so you need to implement that as part of uh, the logic so okay. either so, you can use events uh, to notify something else or you can use uh, basically if you want to send out an email then that needs to happen from one of the containers so let's say if you build a service that sends out emails you can just plug that service as a workflow step and it will notify the editor to approve the articles. And so they know like uh, out of the box provided by Argo to just plug in the email component. Uh, so we have to create our service, own service and do that stuff. Yeah, so yes. sorry. Yes. Yeah, so uh, there is no out of the box feature in Argo to send emails, uh, basically to do anything. Basically, uh, you have it provides a framework for you to define uh, steps in a workflow fashion, but what uh, those steps will do, that depends on your requirement and your business implementation. You can send email, you can send SMS, or you can just uh, show an alert to the user at that time. It's up to you. Okay. Fine, thanks, thanks a lot. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. I think we've... I think we've got a, qu a question from Vikas as well. From the yeah, Vikas, Vikas, you have mic access now. Yeah, I think so. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Uh, I just have a quick question regarding the deploying the latest Docker image. So what I really meant from, from you know, my question is that if in case I have a Docker image, say, version 1, and I have now published Docker version image version 2, not mm -hmm. in code, just push to a Docker repository, mm -hmm. would Argo would be able to sense that and deploy that automatically? I'm asking this because this is something which Flux does. So I'm just trying to understand if Argo can do the same as well. Uh, not uh, Argo independently, but you can do that uh, by using Argo events uh, component with that. You can hook Argo events with your Docker repository, and then Argo event can in turn uh, trigger the workflow. OK, and will will Argo also update my, my, my Git repository as well? 
like wherever wherever my code is so you, example, you can, I, yeah you go first so you can uh, define a step uh, within the Argo workflow and have a container do whatever you want to do uh, within that step. Uh, okay, so, so so that's possible, but that's a custom step. Okay. Yeah, that. yeah, and, yeah. And one more question: So where do you where does Argo shows the history of deployments? Like uh, I, I'm assuming there would be some persistent volume, maybe a, a persistent volume claim. Yeah. So by default, uh, it's part of the pod in which Argo is running. Uh, the SQL component which we show, but you can attach uh, uh, external persistent volume as well if you want to persist it uh, uh, outside the pod as well. Okay, uh, got it. Yeah, that, that's pretty much I have. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for your talk. I think the default configuration is to store 50 workflow runs. I might be mistaken, but uh, that's how much it persists. Okay, cool. Thanks. Thanks so much for that. That's all I have. Thanks. <laughs> this has been a world record for the number of questions that have been asked. <laughs> yeah. Which maybe. either means it means one one or two things, guys. You know, either they're all really, really curious about it, or your actual presentation had zero content and they have to ask all their questions now. <laughs> yeah. I think it's a second way confused them. We confuse them even more. <laughs> <laughs> no, no one understands Kubernetes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think uh, we uh, probably probably exhausted all all the questions just now. Amanda, I, I might just pass back over to you just to just to round up. <laughs>